Okay, so last time we started talking about tests of significance, and we were using the one sample t-test. And in those situations, we're just looking at one one sample or one group of people, and we're asking whether or not a particular value is different from the average score of that variable. So I think we were looking at this age when the kid is born, uh, and we were asking whether or not the average score for this, which I believe was around 23.3, is that statistically different from 21? Um, you know, the no hypothesis in that situation would be, you know, the probability of that happening is very low. So we could reject the no hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis that um, uh, this is different from 21. Um, it's kind of a contrived use of the t-tests. There's some situations I can see where you might want to test particular values, uh, but a more useful uh, test of a t-test or, or more useful um, situation in which you use t-tests is this two-sample t-test. And there you might want to ask a more natural question of, you know, let's say that we were looking curious about whether or not men and women answer this question differently. And so a natural question might be, is the average age for when men have their first child, is that different uh, from women? Is that a statistical difference? Um, in terms of the null hypothesis, it would be that there is no difference, that men and women answer this question on average the same. And the alternative hypothesis would alternative hypothesis would be that there is a statistical difference. Uh, so to test that, um, you just go to analyze and then you go to compare means. And I've already dealt with the whole issue of missing values and so I don't have to worry about that. And just looking at the different options, we did one sample t-test and now we're doing an independent sample t-test. There's a paired sample t-test um, which we'll, we might talk about later. Uh, which is when we have maybe the same person answering uh, two sets of questions uh, at different times. And, and there the independence, uh, statistical independence assumption, uh, which uh, we use for this, this particular test, is being violated, so we have to do a pair sample t-test. Um, let's not go into too much into that detail right now, but uh, we're doing an independent sample t-test. We have two groups of people answering the same question. So click on that. And here we just find our test variable, which was age kid born. And we move it over to the test variable. And then in terms of the groups, um, now that we have two samples, um, we're looking at sex, and we move that into the grouping variable. Kind of makes sense. That's the how we're looking at this variable. And we have to define groups. The reason we have to define groups is that, you know, although sex, there's only two groups, there might be a variable where it has various groups, like for race, and you might want to look at the difference between whites and blacks, or whites and others. And a sample t-test, um, two sample t-tests, can only compare two groups. So that's why it's asking you to specify. Uh, here we're just looking at men and women, so I'm just putting the two values for this variable. Clicking on continue and clicking on OK. Okay, so on the output, just like the one sample t-test, it gives you two output boxes. One of them kind of gives you the basic descriptives. So here we have males and females, and you know you see that the ends are different. We have 800 males and 1,200 females. Uh, and then we have the two averages for those two groups. So we already see a difference because men are about 25 and a half, and women are almost 23 years old. Gives you standard deviations, and they're kind of similar. There's about a five to six year standard deviation, and then it gives you the standard error of the mean, or basically what the um, uh, standard error sampling standard, um, the standard error of the sampling distribution. Um, and the second box here it actually does the test for us. Uh, you'll see this Levine's test for equality of variance. You can go ahead and ignore that because we're not covering this in this class. Um, so just move on to the second portion of this box and basically as you see the t-test for equality of means and that's saying basically that the null hypothesis that it's testing is that um, the two means are equal and you write uh, mu of male equals mu of female um, gives you the t-tests of that difference so let's look at here at the other side of the box here. It says that your mean difference between males and females in the sample is 2.843. And so is this, um, is this value 
um, greater and above the difference that you would expect from your standard error. And um, it gives you a t-value for that difference. And then it also gives you the significance, basically what the alpha value is for this t-score. Uh, of course, you know, by hand we'd have to look up at our t distributions or look at, at different sampling distributions of t, um, t graphs at the back of a book or something. But here we don't have to do that because SPSS calculates everything and it calculates uh, a test of significance, uh, uh, a two-tailed test. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But it basically tells you at what level of significance can you uh, reject the null hypothesis. So yeah, there's a probability that 25 and 22, um, this difference is, uh, n you can ignore this difference, you know, that this is basically a random error, but the probability of that is very, very low. It's uh, below a 0 .000. So you can reject the null hypothesis at a 0 .000 level, or another way of saying it is that this difference is statistically different. This dif there's a statistical difference between 25 and 22 at a 0 .000 level. Um, and lastly here, it gives you, um, you know, these are sample differences, right? And But given what we know about the sample, the size, and the standard error, we can make an assumption that the real difference between males and females is around 2.373 and 3.14. So it gives us a confidence interval about we're 95% confident that the real uh, difference between men and women are between these two values. Uh, so when looking at this score or this graph, you basically just want to look at this uh, first significance level. Is it a below 0 0.05? Is it 0 0.001? Uh, it depends on your uh, test of significance that you're, or the level of confidence that you want to have. Okay, so now let's look at a different uh, variable in which fa males and females may actually answer differently. Uh, a variable I was looking at a minute ago was um, a question of how many college courses in science do you take? or have you taken um, and let me find that variable um, let me just reset this box there it is it's this question of how many you know college courses in science did you take and I just move it over as my test variable in this situation again it's gonna be sex um, it's gonna move it over my grouping variable define the groups one and two and click on continue and then I just click on OK. OK and just like last time I got two boxes um, giving me the basic descriptives. Out of 300 males we have around 12.5 uh, college courses that they took that were science and females were around 9.6 so there's a difference here. Uh, the standard deviation is rather large in both situations um, is of 22 courses so there were people who took a lot of courses and some people who didn't take a whole lot of courses uh, so even though the average is 12.49 we have a pretty big standard deviation um, again we can look ignore the Levine's test of equality here and just look at the, the level of significance and the null hypothesis would be like it is in every situation is that males and females are the same um, that this mean difference of 2.89 it is not very significant uh, given our standard error. And our standard error here is actually a little bit larger than last time because A, our sample is smaller uh, and also our standard deviation is larger. So both of those situations uh, result in a larger standard error. Basically we have to assume um, that the random difference um, is, is bigger and, um, and if we actually look at the significance, even though we have a T of 1.86, um, this this uh, level of significance is not um, uh, lower than uh, 0.05, definitely not lower than 0 0.001. So this is too too high of a likelihood. Um, kind of even for a liberal perspective, is that 0.05 is is kind of a cutoff point, and this is saying that there's a 6.3 percent chance that these two means are actually the same. They look different. And even though it's kind of a low probability, it's not low enough uh, for typical social science. Um, you can see here the reason why that is is that the 95% uh, confidence interval is between uh, negative 0.157 and five and almost six courses. 
So, you know, at a 95% confidence, uh, we don't really know if the difference between men and women are is zero or below zero or um, around six courses. Um, you can just look at this in terms of this significance. This 0 0.063 is higher than 0 0.05. And, you know, our last example this is clearly below that. Um, so we can't reject the null hypothesis here. There isn't enough difference to say that uh, men and women take different amounts of courses. Um, this is a two-tailed test, um, which is the only option we have for um, SPSS. Of course, by hand we can calculate the one-tailed test, and that might give us a slightly different score. Um, but we won't cover that, um, at least for SPSS functions. So um, just basic, again, be able to tell whether or not something is statistically different just by looking at the level of significance and reading these tables is not too difficult uh, if you know what to look for. So that's a two sample t-test and we'll see you next time.